Hey everyone, welcome back to The Overseers. My name is Proelios and I'm your sole host for this episode. Uh, Nightwing's currently busy with something so he won't be able to join us, but I'll try and make things work. Um, before we begin though, uh, apologies to those of you that were looking forward to last week's episode. Uh, we couldn't put it out because I was down with Dengue, or Dengue, like it's pronounced based on where you live in the world. Uh, but yeah, I was down with high fever and I've only just recovered like around 10 to 11 days later. So yeah. And in this episode, uh, I'll be breaking down uh, my thoughts on the Washington Justice, uh, who recently qualified from NA for uh, the Overwatch League season for playoffs. Now, um, like along with them, uh, like even the San Francisco Shock have qualified from NA and the Philadelphia Fusion have qualified from APAC but I will be posting separate reviews for them uh, in this episode we'll just be talking about the justice and uh, like I'll be making uh, review videos for uh, each of the eight teams that are uh, that have made it to the playoffs and maybe Nightwing will join me for some of those I'm not currently sure but uh, we'll see uh, how things go Anyway, in this episode, we'll talk about the Washington Justice. So, uh, this team overall um, has been quite, I guess, mediocre because they haven't really been the most adaptable team overall. They've always uh, relied on uh, the like the available hero pools to be like essentially they've relied on there to be as many options as possible in the hero pool. So they generally don't do well in restrictive metas, especially uh, the Neo Goats meta that we saw in the June Joust and also in the Countdown Cup where they struggled a little bit um, with uh, the Lucio, Sigma, Ash and Echo Bands. Um, but right now let me just go over what I think of some of their players and uh, just, you know, analyze how they will measure up against some of their kind of competitors. And firstly, I want to talk about the tank line, which is Mag and Fury. So I think Mag overall has, as expected, looked quite good on the on Winston, uh, which is his signature hero. And uh, early on in the season, he looked really good on Winston in some of those slower comps, like with Ana Break. So whether you played Winston with Diva or Zarya, uh, Mag looked quite good, and uh, he didn't seem to do very well in fast compositions like Neo Goats. Uh, which had like a Moira Lucio instead and were like faster paced. I think he's still kind of one of the most individually talented Winstons in the league, especially with his primal rage mechanics. Uh, and I think he, uh, in this season, he's also impressed me with his aggressive Reinhardt play. And uh, this is something that a lot of analysts spoke about before the season is that like his Winston's phenomenal, his Reinhardt's good, and then there's his Zora's hand wrecking ball. So uh, things have pretty much panned out that way, with his Winston being the best. The Reinhardt still being better than I expected it to be, uh, especially with the amount of shatters he was landing, like with great accuracy. And I also think his Orisa play has been quite decent this season. Uh, like his Wrecking Ball is definitely a weakness, which is probably why they haven't pulled it out uh, in these postseason games, even though it being uh, like a pretty good meta for Wrecking Ball. But I think it's a restriction that they've so far been able to manage. So, yeah, let's see how things go for Mag from here on. Uh, alongside him is Fury, who has played D.Va for most of the season and looked fairly good on her. And I think that's what you can pretty much expect from Fury. Um, what we don't usually expect is him being outclassed by some other off-tanks uh, in the league, which has definitely happened on multiple occasions. But I think he's still got great awareness and game sense and he's still able to eat important cooldowns and ultimates quite often. Uh, and I think even though he's just played D.Va for probably 80-85% of his playtime, uh, he's also pulled out heroes like Sigma and Zarya, which he hasn't looked bad on. Uh, so I think Mag and Fury form a pretty good tank line overall. Uh, I think their only weakness comes to those Wrecking Ball compositions with which they are voluntarily, I think, opting out of, even though it is part of the meta. But yeah, that's just how this team is um anyway moving on to the dps line uh i think w like one player we definitely have to acknowledge is dk 
who has looked exceptional on pretty much every hero he's been fielded on this season, but primarily he has been playing Tracer. And I think his low resource playstyle is a big boon to the team because uh, Mag is a really high resource player and he needs more of a pocket any anyway. So it's good that uh, especially DK is commanding a low amount of resources, which is amazing considering uh, like the carry level potential that he has. You usually see a lot of carry players demand a lot of resources from the team, but DK can manage to pull off amazing things even without that pocket, which is commendable. So I absolutely have no complaints about DK at all. Um, let's talk about his sort of starting companion, which is the flex DPS player Assassin. Uh, I think Assassin uh, has looked good on two heroes this season. That's the Echo and the Sombra. I think on Echo, he has really good beam usage. Like it's it's it might be a really odd thing to say, but sometimes uh, players aren't able to accurately judge when to pull out the beam. Because sometimes they can just preemptively kind of lock onto the targets with it and then they realize that, oh, he's not actually below half HP, so I can't really burst him down that easily. But Assassin is really aware that way. He's He only pops out his beam when he can confirm the kill most of the times. Uh, like, which is really good for that, for the playstyle he usually pulls out. And I think... Um, one weakness that he probably has on Echo is that he's really conservative during duplicates. And I don't know if he, uh, like, he suddenly become conservative because of the uh, recent Echo nerf, because of which he does not, like, always uh, leave the duplicate with uh, full HP. Uh, but, like, I think he, he just focuses more on trying not to die than actually getting a lot of value and going aggressive on Echo during duplicates, which is uh, which is a double-edged sword, because if you just survive, you're still like a an effective 6th player on the battlefield and you can still farm your way to an ultimate. But if you don't play aggressively, especially with like a free life, uh, like extra life with you essentially, you, you, you there's no point in going for that aggressive play, right? Then you might as well just play another hero on which you can play more conservatively to live. So, it's been a double-edged sword, like I said, but... I mean, it, he's still a great Echo, so I, it's not a very big complaint. Uh, and then moving on to Sombra, which, he, like, Sombra is a flanker, and <laughs> you can kind of play her in an assassin-like playstyle, pardon the pun, but assassin does play her like that. He just goes for the backline and doesn't focus too much on those hack-oriented plays. He just focuses on kind of solo killing his targets, which works out brilliantly well for him. And in case it doesn't, Mag is always there to follow up, so that that's a lot of like good communication between the tanks and the DPS. Um, and I mean, yeah, I think these like Decay and Assassin are the players that we would expect to see most of the time, if not all the time, for the Justice at this point. Even though they do have like backup DPS players, like I, Tube has been moved to the the Brigitte role, which he's looked like underwhelming at and they also have Jerry who actually like I think Jerry played really uh, well on Ash this season whenever he was fielded I think he really understands Ash's kit really well and gets value out of all her abilities so like if, if, if at all they think of playing Ash they can definitely field him and maybe decay alongside him to play Tracer but I think it's quite unlikely considering that Mag and, sorry, Assassin and Decay are such a strong DPS line together. Um, anyway, moving on to the supports, which is just Closer and Bebe at this point, at least in this meta because uh, there's a lot of Lucio play going on from the Justice, uh, which I think suits them a lot because Closer, he's just mainly known for his Lucio. Like, he, he's looked fairly good on him this season as well. I think it's like a... Um, it's a big advantage that Closer can play Lucio because his Mercy and Brick do not look that good. Uh, and he plays very reserved and doesn't go for risky plays, which is, uh, I think, the playstyle the Justice need because they have got playmakers like Mag and Decay. So Closer doesn't really need to try and pop off all the time. He just supports his team well and does his job. And then on Flex support, they've got Bebe, who's... Uh, he hasn't looked that good this season, to be honest. I was... I thought he was one of the worst flex supports coming into the season and although he hasn't been objectively bad i do think he's been one of the weaker ones 
Uh, I think the only hero that he probably played decently was the Batiste every now and then, but that's about it. Um, yeah, and that's that's all I have to say. And I guess yeah, now you can call Tuba a support player as well because he was confirmed to be a Brig specialist, but he hasn't looked exceptional. Like they could probably put closer on Brig and get the same results. Uh, so nothing really special going on for the support line. Um, so overall, where do I think this team stands in terms of the playoffs, right? Uh, I feel like even though uh, the Justice have looked good in this meta, especially with those fast-paced uh, dive brawl comps, and for those of you that don't know, dive brawl is kind of uh, a fast-paced dive comp, which you play with Moira Lucio, so you have Winston Diva, Moira Lucio, and then you have like some combination of like mobile or fast heroes, uh, Pardon the disturbance if there was any in my mic, by the way. Um, but yeah, you generally have heroes like Tracer, Sombra, Reaper. Uh, we've even seen Echo in that Neo Goats version. So that's the kind of the composition that the Justice are playing. And they mainly just rely on... Um, if, if they are playing in a mirror, they rely on uh, their opponents to use their escape or defensive cooldowns and then go aggressive and pick them off. Or if they are playing against that kind of ball zen comp, then they just immediately go for the zen yara and uh, get that 6 3 5 advantage. So, so far it's worked out well for them, uh, but I do see a few problems. Uh, the main one being that, uh, like historically, the Justice haven't looked good at these fast paced comps this season, uh, especially against teams that have played them better than them. So far, this team has only really played against ball comps for the like. At, at least more than 90% of the times they've played against the Paris Eternal and the Houston Outlaws, both of which preferred playing ball. And I think if this comp is played right, it can counter that, uh, like the ball Zen comp, uh, because Briggs' peel isn't really enough to protect the Zen in those compositions, uh, especially against these like dive rush, dive brawl comps. Uh, so I do think that they've had a bit of an easy run. But once they get to the playoffs, things will get much harder for them. And uh, once they start going up against some of these other fast-paced teams, especially the Dallas Fuel, whom they're going to play next, I think there's a very high chance they'll crumble. Like, not just be beaten, I think they can just, like, collapse, not win any maps. But it's, it's a hard one to say because, like... The Justice could just have improved since the Neogoth's composition kind of made its way into the Overwatch League. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not holding my hopes high for them. So I think the Justice will make a pretty early exit from the playoffs in the postseason. So anyway, uh, those are my thoughts on the Washington Justice, guys. If you have any of your own to share, feel free to type them out in the comment section. And uh, remember to like the video if you enjoyed my analysis and subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell icon so that you get notifications whenever we post new videos. Uh, thanks a lot for listening and I'll see you in the next review which will be about the Philly Fusion. Bye guys.